see some poop. Can you see her? No. <gasps> she's huge. She's so, uh, oh yeah. Gosh. She's going through a growth spurt for sure. Last time we weighed her, she was like 15 pounds, but we're pretty sure she's at least 18. Wow. Look at that camera for us. She thinks she's sneaking up yeah. on us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let her think that. Hi, early birds. Welcome, welcome. Thanks so much for hopping in. In a few minutes, we're gonna get started. But you guys that are in here early can see that Grindylo is trying to sneak up on us right now. She's at the bottom of the habitat, right there. Drop an octopus emoji if you can see her. She's right here, there's an arm, there's her head, mantle. Another arm here, another arm there. Oh, she's eyeballing us for sure. She's checking us out. You don't see her, that's okay. She's doing a really good job of camouflage. Lena, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Can you see her now? We got some octopus emojis in the chat. I said to drop an octopus emoji if you can spot the octopus. She's showing off a little bit now. She showed us an arm. She's tucking it away. You can see her suction cups there. Welcome, everybody. Thanks so much for hopping on with us. Today, we are going to be learning all about the giant Pacific octopus. I am joined with Aquarius Brooke. Hi, Brooke. Hi, guys. Hello. And we're chilling for a few minutes while we wait for Grindy to join us up here. She is very smart. Um, and in the meantime, while we wait for her to make her grand arrival, if you could share this stream with your family and friends, give us some likes. That way we get more people in here who we can educate all about the giant Pacific octopus. She is very sneaky. You're watching from the sea lion exhibit. Hello, across the aquarium. They're actually fairly close to us. Welcome, welcome. Gru is sadly no longer with us. We have a couple of videos dedicated to him, um, but we can talk a little bit more about octopus lifespans. Um, hi, welcome back. This is Grindy. It's been a minute since Grindy was live with us, um, but you're gonna meet her today. I'm really excited. You could see her before I zoomed in. That's amazing. You got great eyesight. <laughs> amazing. Welcome everybody who's just hopping in. We're live here at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California. And we are waiting patiently for Miss Grindy Low, the giant Pacific octopus to make her appearance. We can see some arms sticking out behind the kelp right here. Oh, as I say that, she tucks them away. And in a few minutes, she's probably gonna come up and say hello. Here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, we do not force our animals to interact during our live streams. Um, we never want to make an octopus uncomfortable. So we'll hang out for a few minutes and see if she's willing to come up and answer your questions. There she goes, on crawling on, on the move. Maybe she's gonna play hard to get today. Oh yeah, she's, she's sneaking <laughs> up on us right now. You can see her. <laughs> she's very cow. sneaky, I love it. Um, someone said they came here on their honeymoon. That's incredible. Let me know what your favorite habitat is. And someone asked if they can watch this live stream in person. You can from the other side of the glass there. If you head to our Northern Pacific Gallery, we won't be able to see you, unfortunately, and you won't be able to see us, but you will be able to see Grindy, who's running around her exhibit right now. Welcome, everybody. Drop a blue heart if you've been to our aquarium before here in Long Beach, California. <laughs> oh, someone says they want to visit next year. That's incredible. You're over in Lakewood, very close by. Amazing. Got some blue hearts in the comments. Ooh, does she get any new toys today? Yes, actually, stay tuned. We have a new enrichment item for Miss Grindy. You're a member, incredible. Thank you so much for being a member. That's an incredible way to support our nonprofit aquarium. And it's beneficial to you too because you get admission 365 days of the year. Thank you so much. Sometimes 366 if it's a leap year. All right, everybody, we have the star of the show. Here she is. Do me a favor and get, give us some likes, share this stream with your family and friends because you don't want to miss this incredible creature and everything we're going to learn today. Welcome everybody, welcome and say hello to Grindy. Here she is, um, just tangled up in Brooke. <laughs> Always. Day in the life. Um, Brooke told me before this live stream started that Grindy has been very into tug of war um, with her body and Brooke's body. <laughs> so yeah, no, no rope needed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As you can see, she is definitely into this playtime. Everybody say hi to Grindy. Oh my goodness, look at that, you guys. Hi, Grindy. 
Oh my goodness. Yeah, there we go. She is so spectacular. You're so dark today, Grindy. Like a burgundy purple almost. Amazing. Oh my goodness. All right, everybody, let's give Brooke a round of applause just for managing to stand up straight right now. <laughs> this is incredible. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Thanks so much for hopping in. We're live here at the Aquarium of the Pacific inside of our giant Pacific octopus habitat. Now, the giant Pacific octopus is the largest of all octopus species. It's also the longest lived and it lives in very, very cold water. So not only is Brooke having to deal with <laughs> all of those suction cups on her, she's having to deal with the very chilly water happening in there. Oh yeah, she's we got might, a lot to say. We might get some today. <laughs> My moderator was wondering the correct way to spell Grindy and she actually had it correct the way she sent it to me. It's G-R-I-N-D-Y, right? Did I spell that right? G-R-I-N-D-Y. Yes. yes. <laughs> Sorry. Her full name is right Grindylo. Um, Grindylo is technically the correct name, um, but we call her Grindy for short. And yeah, I like to just quiz Brooke while she's having to wrestle with an octopus. Oh, absolutely. Keep me on my toes. <laughs> yep, 100%. Brooke, um, can she bite? Yes, so she does have, uh, she doesn't have teeth like most animals. She actually has a beak like a bird. And if she'll give me my arm back, I can kind of tell you. I don't know if that's going to happen. Yeah, I might not get this arm If you need help, you, you holler at me. <laughs> Let <laughs> me know. This okay. is part of the job. <laughs> it is worth uh, letting people know that this doesn't hurt her in any way. For her, this is an enriching game. She can choose when to let go and when to hang on. And she clearly really enjoys playing tug of war. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so. She's like, this is the best. It's also really interesting because this is a fairly new interest of her. She used to be really into splash time, which is just a nice, gentle splash session. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, overnight, she got bigger and decided that she wants to WWE wrestle all the time. <laughs> Let's so. go. I love it. She loves it, too. This is so much fun. Oh, my gosh. Someone says they are outside of the exhibit right now. I'm going to give a wave to them. Bye. I don't know if you can see my hand through there. But we can't see you, unfortunately. But hopefully you can get a glimpse at Grindy Low. Um, going just full on uh, hugging mode on, <laughs> on Brooke here today. All right, everybody, welcome. Thanks so much for hopping in. We're gonna answer your questions and we're gonna learn all about octopuses today. Yeah, Grindy does love her Aquarius Brooke, as you can see. Um, what's it like caring for an octopus, Brooke? It's I mean, really, besides this. Besides this, besides <laughs> it being a workout, it's a lot of fun. Uh, like I said, this is a new behavior for her. They're an animal that's constantly changing and adapting. They all have different personalities, likes and dislikes. So it's really a fun animal to work with because on any given day, you're, you never know what you're gonna get. I know, amazing. Okay, lots of questions coming in. They are not so concerned with Brindy. They wanna make sure you're okay, Brooke. Are you, does this hurt? Are you good? I am good, I am okay. Uh, at most, she'll leave little what we call octopus kisses. There'll yep. probably be a few on me at the end of this that I can show you guys. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, more than anything, it's just a little bit exhausting. Someone asked if the, uh, their tentacles sting. Um, which is a great question because she actually doesn't have any tentacles. Those are her arms. But is she stinging you at all with those arms and the no. suction cups? There's no stinging at all. It's just strength. So each suction cup, you can kind of see them there. Yeah. Each one has about 10 pounds of force that it can hang on to. So it makes her a really strong animal. And each arm of hers is going to have at least like 200, 250 cups, which totals about 2,000 on this animal. So it makes her incredibly strong and also incredibly smart. Each suction cup can taste and smell individually. So it's how she explores her environment. It's how she explores different people, all of those things. <laughs> Someone says you definitely don't need to go to the gym today <laughs> or ever. <laughs> just get your workout here at work every single day exactly. this is incredible okay lots of questions coming in welcome if you're just joining us we are live here at the aquarium of the pacific in long beach california hanging out with grindy the octopus and aquarius brook my name is madeline i am behind the camera and lots of questions coming in okay do you, does she have teeth so she doesn't have any teeth she actually has a beak like a bird so if you look to the center of all those arms she's not she's tucked it away for the moment but her beak would live right in there and what's really cool about these animals is that that beak is used because a lot of their prey items are hard shell things, clam, mussel, crab. So they use that beak to either crack them open or to penetrate. 
And then the beak is lined with a neurotoxin that causes paralysis in their prey. And then it will break down the tissue, so they actually slurp up their food, which is yeah. super creepy, but on brand. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Someone asked if she's playing right now. Yes, this is actually yes. a playtime <laughs> behavior. Um, octopuses typically don't do anything they don't want to do. So if Grindy wasn't interested in hanging out with us or didn't want anything to do with Brooke, she could swim away throughout her habitat. Um, but as you can see, she will not leave Brooke alone today. Maybe I can help out by offering a hand here a little bit. See if she's interested. Else. Yeah, see if she's interested. So, Brooke, is it true that Grindy can taste with her suction cups? Yes, each suction cup can individually taste and smell, which is part of why they're so smart, because each arm will actually have its own brain, giving her a total of eight brains in her arms and then another brain in her head. So she's got nine total. And the, the suction cups are basically what inform her about her environment. Yeah, definitely. It's really cool. Um, yeah, so here she is. She's tasting me right now. Um, probably tastes like the chicken sandwich I had for lunch a little bit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 100%. Okay, everybody, welcome. We're live here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. As you can see, this is a little bit of a distracting stream because we're watching Aquarius Brook play with Grindy, the giant Pacific octopus. Um, lots of questions coming in. We'll get to as many as we can. Um, but in the meantime, I want to know where everybody's watching from today. Like I said, we're in Long Beach, California. Let us know where you're watching from. Brooke, can you tell us the difference between tentacles and arms? Yes, so an octopus doesn't have any tentacles. Those are actually saved for their counterparts in squid and cuttlefish. The arms are what she has. She's got eight of them. They're each full of 200 to 250 suction cups. And she uses those to basically explore her environment. Very cool. <laughs> and you, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Amazing. People want to make sure that it's not hurting you, Brooke, or if it's hurting the octopus. Is anyone in pain here? No, nobody's in pain here. Um, I'm fine. The octopus can choose to stick or unstick. So this is a game she enjoys, basically a tug of war. It's a really enriching thing for her. And with all of our animals here at the aquarium, we allow them to choose what they want to uh, be involved with. So Grindy doesn't have to come over here at all. We don't harass her to. She just enjoys this playtime and enjoys these play sessions. Yeah, maybe we should get some ASMR with this this noise. I kind of love it. Let's see. Kind of sounds like bubble wrap. This one's gonna be really loud. Yeah, let's hear it. Yeah, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. <laughs> Welcome everybody. We're here live at the Aquarium of the Pacific. Someone wants to know what an octopus feels like. I always say a wet gummy bear. A little, maybe a little boogery too. She is really slimy today. She's mm -hmm. actually shedding her suction cups. So that's basically a process where when they grow, they uh, will shed their suction cups. So it's a good sign of growth, but it makes them really slimy. So right now she's just got a bunch of gunk on me today. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> Amazing. Someone said they just left the aquarium. Well, thank you so much for visiting today. I'm glad you can continue your visit here on TikTok Live with us. Um, and make sure you're following us here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. We're live every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Pacific time. And then we go live periodically throughout the week. But at least, you know, you'll find us once a week at 2 p.m. here on TikTok Live. Make sure you're following us. Turn on those notifications for when we go live. Um, and you might be able to see more stuff like this. But don't go anywhere. We're going to be live until 3 p.m. today. And what just happened, Brooke? What was that about? Oh, I'm afraid she's going to nail me. But yeah, she's for sure going to get you. She, yeah. yeah, she's eyeballing me. So this is a, a, a siphon on an octopus. You can kind of see it. So give me a hand. I can point it out. She basically uses it when she breathes. And she can shoot water out of it at about 20 miles an hour, which is really important because it's how she actually swims in the ocean. She'll fill her mantle, which is this large head of hers, with water and then she'll push the water out and she'll use that siphon to steer in the ocean which is amazing but on the contrast they also use it for other more playful things <laughs> she's very expressive with her siphon so sometimes when she's excited or enjoying a play session she will end up posing me down which is what it looks yep. like she's, she's attempting to do that right now do. yep mm -hmm. what's really cool too is the siphon can go 20 miles an hour and it has pinpoint accuracy so <laughs> She never misses. <laughs> she never misses. Never, ever. That's incredible. She's really showing off for us today, you guys. This is amazing. Hey, thank you so much to our first donor. Thank you so much for your $10 donation. Our aquarium is a nonprofit, and every single dollar you donate here on TikTok Live goes right back to the 12,000 animals you call us home. You guys, at my spiel today, it's not on point. 
I'll start over. <laughs> Your donation goes to the 12,000 animals that call us home and also our conservation and education efforts. And we can't thank you enough for your support. Even just by tuning into this live, you're supporting us. So thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you all. Okay, thank you so much for being here. This is awesome. All right, lots of questions coming in. Do the suction cups have teeth? No, so there's no teeth in the suction cups. All they can do is basically taste and smell and they can hold about 10 pounds of pressure each. So that basically means anything in this exhibit, any rock, any, any kelp, anything like that, she can very easily move. And a lot of times she'll wait till I make it really pretty and then she'll move it all. So. <laughs> of course, yes, yeah, she wants to rearrange. <laughs> Speaking of the rest of her exhibit, what other animals do we have in here? Does she live with any other octopuses? No, so a lot of people ask if we give her an octopus friend and we don't because octopus are solitary animals. So they typically prefer to live alone and they actually will uh, cannibalize on each other. So it's really not a wise idea to put octopus together. The only time they would come together would be for mating purposes. And even then that can be pretty dicey because the females are typically larger than the males and sometimes they'll pretend to want to mate and then just eat the male. So <laughs> we like to keep them separated. Girl power. Safe. Yep. Mm -hmm. However, we do have lots of animals in here that are um, things that she won't eat. So she's got a starfish. You can see one right in that corner there yep, with you. Have a starfish here. You also have a really good look just next to that starfish of the, uh, it's a quabrankia, it's a car carnivorous sea slug. Mm -hmm. So he's up here, we have anemones, and she has lots of live kelp as well. So we definitely give her uh, species appropriate and environmentally appropriate tank mates, just not anything that she can maybe eat or hurt. Absolutely amazing. Very cool. Okay, lots of questions coming in. Thank you all for joining us today. This is so much fun. The octopus is one of my favorite live streams we do here at the aquarium because they are just so fantastic. Hi, we're live streaming. Welcome. <laughs> it's a busy day here at the aquarium. <laughs> all right, let's talk about the lifespan of an octopus and cephalopods in general. They have a pretty short lifespan, right, Brooke? Yes, so uh, a GPO, that's just skilled jargon for a giant Pacific octopus, which is what she is, typically have a lifespan between three and five years. So they uh, they always go way quicker than yeah. uh, you want them to. Mm -hmm. I always say that if they lived any longer, they would take over the world. It's very so true. it might be for humankind benefit that they, <laughs> they don't live past that three to five year mark. But yeah, it's incredible. They're incredibly smart creatures. It's unfortunate they have short lifespans, but while they're here, they make an incredible impact. And we're so glad that Grindy is here to be able to educate you about cephalopods and octopuses in general. Um, Brooke, how cold is this water? So this water is the coldest in the building. It's a uh, frigid 47 degrees, which is just how she likes it. <laughs> and that always makes it a, a real treat when it comes to diving. Oh this yeah, tank. exactly. You actually get in there and dive with her. Yes, so I hop in and dive this tank. Uh, it's very cold and it's also very difficult because as you can see, <laughs> uh, she tends to get very involved. So I end up uh, having to bring a lot of spares of different tools. She likes to help you. Yeah, she likes to help me by taking all of the tools <laughs> and taking them elsewhere. And uh, she also is known for, you know, grabbing onto my weights or my regulator or whatever else oh, yeah. that I need. Yeah. And, you know, she also is known for, you know, grabbing onto my weights or my regulator or whatever else oh, yeah. that I need. Yeah. And, you know, playing tug of war. To assist, yeah. Absolutely. We're um, we're gonna tag along next week with Brooke um, and make a video about diving with Grindy. So stay tuned for that on our feed. Make sure you're following us here at Aquarium Pacific. And hey, I wanna thank our seven donors who have raised over $100 so far, a short little time, um, for this live stream. Thank you so much. As a nonprofit, we appreciate your support. You guys are incredible. All right, this is so much fun. There's so many questions coming in. I'm like, which one haven't I asked? Which one have I already asked? Oh, this is a great question. So Brooke, how did you end up working with octopuses for a living? Um, so I ended up just getting into the animal care field and I, I just pretty much took whatever was available. I wasn't picky as to what I wanted to work with. And the opportunities popped up with uh, cephalopods. That's a fancy name for basically Grindy and her family mm -hmm. and friends. And once I found them, I never looked back. I absolutely fell in love with these animals. They're she literally won't let you look back. <laughs> she <laughs> won't. Stuck here yep. forever. Yep. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, these animals are incredible. Like I said earlier, they all have different personalities, likes and dislikes. They like and dislike certain people. So it's a really cool animal to work with because it's always changing and it always keeps you on your toes. People think you're just an incredible actress because they're convinced that this is hurting you in some way. <laughs> <laughs> they know Grindy's fine, but they think that you're just, you know, grin and bearing it. But I can tell you guys, she's actually fine. 
those suction cups are definitely very strong, but they're not hurting her. And they leave little marks behind. You can see them on her arm already popping up. Popping up. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, Someone asked if you. Here. Yep. Oh, yes. She got you good there. Yep. She always mm -hmm. gets really good around the elbow. Yep. It's like a circular surface. So oh, really yeah. It's really grabs on. Right? All about it. Someone asked if you go home with the octopus marks on your skin. I do. I actually, because uh, like I said earlier, she was more into splash time, a little more of a quiet, gentle kind of play. So I enjoyed the summer of getting to wear short sleeves. <laughs> and it would appear like that time is over now. <laughs> I think you're I done. Definitely, uh, in the past, I've had to wear long People are going to worry about summer. you. That's yeah. so funny. Very cool. Okay, well, do you have any advice for anyone that wants to work with cephalopods or octopuses? Maybe long sleeve shirts? Long sleeve shirts is a good one. <laughs> uh, my biggest thing is always, because I don't think people say it enough, is to just like work hard and have a good attitude. It really gets you far. And obviously, one of the bigger ones that people do say is volunteering in the field. And Aquarium of the Pacific has an amazing volunteer program. And I'm not just saying that because I work here. They really they have one of the best, in my opinion, in the country. And they do a really good job of integrating our volunteer staff with our husbandry staff so you do the things that we do. Yeah, so, there's a lot of great opportunities. You can head to our link in bio if you're interested in volunteering at our aquarium here in Long Beach. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This visual is just so cool, Brooke. Like, this is your life. This is a day in the life of Brooke. Mm -hmm. This is it. I'm stuck here until she's done. Okay. Someone wanted to know if this is a way for her to show affection. Would you say so? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's playtime. She's yeah. enjoying it. She's here for it. Uh, we haven't we haven't offered her any food to be here, so she's over here of her own accord, even without food on the table. Mm -hmm. it's, it's how she enjoys spending her time. And like we said earlier, nobody, none of the animals here are forced to do anything they don't want to do. So she's over here. And, you know it's because she likes to be and that's also yeah. what i like about octos because they uh they don't want to be there and they will just leave yeah they have a very special relationship great questions coming in does she ever ink or is she capable of inking so she is capable of inking she has not inked in the time we've had her here and uh, that's important because inking while it's an important thing that they have especially in the wild to escape predators it is a sign of extreme stress you know it's a life or death situation so if she were to ink here we would be concerned and we'd need to mitigate whatever caused that very quickly because we don't want to have her inking here. We want her to live a very happy, very stress-free life. Absolutely. What are some other um, of her other adaptations that help her, you know, live an octopus's life? <laughs> so one of the most incredible ones, and we saw it a bit in the beginning when people couldn't even find her, is going to be her camouflage. So her entire skin is covered in cells called chromatophores and her brain will tell each of those cells when to change color, what color to change to, and also what texture to change to. So right now she's a bright red, and she's got like a real smooth head, but sometimes when I start rubbing her head, you'll see her kind of turn into a little more yeah. of like a rough kind of surface. So her brain's telling her this is, she gets, sometimes when she gets stimulated, she'll kind of change texture. Yeah, she'll react so to it. This is a stimulation for her, so she's reacting to They're it. getting a massage. She, she loves, loves it. She loves her head massages. Oh my goodness, she's like a puppy. I love it. Um, we had a poll in the chat, and it was, uh, would you let Grindy Love suction cup to your arm? 77% said absolutely, 22% said absolutely not. <laughs> I love it. I love the certainty of it. No one's <laughs> Nope, mm -hmm. one or the other. Very cool. Well, speaking of the way that she's able to camouflage, um, does she camouflage anywhere in her exhibit? Is there some certain spots where if you visited the aquarium, you should look for her in? So the typical ones, and these are the typical ones for most GPO, and then she has a kind of weird one, which is funny, are going to be your top corners. <laughs> yep. She'll sit up there and she'll blend in with that rock there. And sometimes I'll see people looking in the enclosure like, the octopus isn't here today. And I'm like, oh, holy well, she's you, there. right she's there. She's right, right in front of you. Yep, she's really good at camouflaging. But her kind of weird, quirky one that she does that I have not had an octopus do in my many years of working with them is she lays right in the front. Yep. Right she there. lays really flat on the ground and she just turns this tail white and she looks like a little thing of like octopus soup. It really does. That's a great way to describe it. It's such a strange spot. I've never <laughs> seen another octo do it. But if you look front and center, sometimes she's right there. Yeah, she's right in front of you. You might miss her. So if you visit the aquarium, definitely take your time in our octopus and cephalopod habitats because they're really good at blending in. Right now we have a couple of octopus habitats. We have Grindy here, the giant Pacific octopus. She's our largest. Um, we also have Crouton, who's a new octopus. Um, and then we have two baby, uh, they're big eye octopuses and babies? Yes. Yes. Big eye. Yes. 
two big eyes in our new babies exhibit. So definitely visit our aquarium. Oh, and we have a two spot as well. We have, we have lots of octopuses right now in almost every gallery, if not every gallery. Yeah, I think we do. Yeah, so yeah, we're, it's a good time to visit the Aquarium mm -hmm. of the Pacific, especially if you're, uh, you're an octopus fan. Yeah, Crouton is a very cute name. <laughs> and we have Crouton and Tortellini, I know, downstairs. This is Grindy. Um, and then I don't think the two babies have names quite yet, but we'll have to find out. Okay, lots of great questions coming in. Let's talk a little bit about octopus safety. As we know, octopuses are notoriously naughty um, and very good escape artists. What are some ways that we can ensure her safety because it's really not good for her to be out of water for too long, is that right? Yes, ideally, now she can go in and out of water. She can breathe out of the water for about, you know, 15, 20 minutes at least. But we wanna make sure that we're keeping her in her enclosure so she's nice and safe. So the number one way that we do that is actually by lining the entire exhibit with AstroTurf. Yeah, that's what this is, AstroTurf. And that's All around her exhibit. That's the one surface that she won't stick to, so it allows us to know that she won't climb out, and it's why we can have an open top tank like this, because there's no lid on this tank, it's just the AstroTurf is what keeps her in. Absolutely. Hey, thank you to our 13 donors. We are nearing $200 raised for our nonprofit aquarium. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and if you can't donate, that's absolutely fine. Just tune in to this live stream, making sure you're following us. And turning on your notifications for when we go live is an incredible way to show support if you can't donate today. But if you can donate today, know that 100% of your donation goes right back to the animals that call us home and our conservation and education efforts. We're so thankful to you. So animals like Grindylo can just, you know, play with Brooke all day long. With their best lives. <laughs> exactly, 100%. Let's talk a little, speaking of their best lives, let's talk a little bit about the care she receives at the aquarium. Um, what are some things that you look for to make sure that she's living a healthy life here? So among the um, many things that we look at, it's always gonna be behavioral. You always wanna establish a baseline for what's a normal behavior for your animal. And that way, if that normal behavior changes, you know something's wrong. So we always make sure to keep an eye on her behavior, make sure she's doing things normal. That includes things like regular eating, regular pooping, all of that stuff is super important to make sure that she's thriving, growing, and living her best life. Additionally, we will also weigh her in order to make sure that she's getting bigger and that she's following a, a normal growth uh, chart. So the way we'll weigh her is really interesting. We'll put a laundry basket in the tank that we've trained her to climb into, and then we'll take the laundry basket out and it'll uh, drain all the water out, and then we'll get a weight on her. And she's basket trained, so she climbs right in, and then she gets lots of rewards as soon as she goes back, on her, uh, back in her enclosure. Awesome. Incredible. Does it feel funny? Is she tickling you right now, Brooke? She's definitely like calmed down. So it's, a, it's a softer. This is calm. Wrestling. The first, the first few minutes she's just so You were excited. in there. Yep. <laughs> that was really entertaining to watch. This is really cool. Um, drop an octopus emoji if you're having a good time so far. I know I am having a great time. Let's see. Catching up on your comments now. We're going to be live until 3 p.m. everybody. So make sure you stay tuned. And we have a fun enrichment session to end on today. So you're going to be able to choose which um, enrichment device we're going to give to her today. And you're gonna learn a little bit more about the ways we keep her rich along the way. All right, let's catch up on your comments, everybody. Everyone wants to know, does she bite? Does it hurt? What is, what is it like to be an octopus and, and go after something you wanna bite? <laughs> So for me, it doesn't hurt her suction cup. She can, it doesn't hurt her either. She can choose to stick or not stick. And she chooses to stick because it's a really enjoyable, fun game for her. In terms of can she bite, she absolutely can. So, but instead of teeth like a shark or like a dog, she actually has a beak. So it'll be in the center of all of her arms here. And she's kind of got it tucked away right now. Right in there. But right in the center, she would have a, a beak. And that beak is really interesting because she has to use it for eating a lot of her prey. Almost all of her prey items are, have hard shells on them. So you can see a couple pieces here. Yeah. She's got, she eats things like clam, mussel, uh, crab. So all of these things have hard shells on them. And she uses that beak to either uh, penetrate those hard shells or to crack them open. And then what's really cool is that beak is lined with a neurotoxin that will paralyze her prey so they can't get away. And finally, break down their tissue so she'll slurp them up instead of, you know, <laughs> biting on them or yep. chewing on them. Mm -hmm. A little smoothie. 
Exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Let's learn a little bit more about her anatomy. So obviously we know that she has eight arms, not tentacles. Octopuses do not have tentacles. Those are reserved for her cephalopod cousins like squid and cuttlefish. Um, so she has eight arms. They are covered in suction cups, as you can see. And then she is basically a head with arms or a body with arms. Is that how we would describe it? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so, so what's going on up here? What's what's happening here? So this is called her mantle. This is going to be basically her head. It holds all of her vital organs, brain, heart, liver, everything's all up in here. And then she basically has her arms beyond that. And you guys probably have a really good view of her eye. And there's her yeah. siphon. She might Showing get you off with today. it. Check out her eye, everybody. Her Ooh, eye. Hello. So her eye is super interesting. You can see it's like a slit. And that's because octopus have panoramic vision. So there's no sneaking up on her. She can see 360 around her oh, head yeah. at any point. Mm -hmm. And that's super important because, I mean, if you look at her, she's just this big, soft, squishy thing. She's a gummy bear. She doesn't have a hard shell. She doesn't have, you know, big, ferocious teeth. So the only way she can defend herself is by using her big brain, you know, camouflage, things like that, and also her eyesight and being able to see around her. Her eye has a lot of structures that are very similar to ours, which is why they also have like light sensitivity and stuff like that. She's incredible. They're very alien-like, I wanna say. It just kind of seems like they're unlike any other animal on earth. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they've got, you know, a beak, they've got Blue blood, they've got uh, a, siphon. Cars, a siphon. <laughs> don't forget that. Yes. She, <laughs> she says, don't forget down. the siphon, Breck. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to get hosed down. And how many hearts does she have, did you say? Uh, so she's got um, she's got a heart, she's got nine brains, she's got a uh, liver. She, she's got so much going on, it's Lots going very on. overwhelming. <laughs> she's incredible. They are very alien like. I love it. <laughs> Okay, catching up. Ooh, quick question. What is the siphon? What role does the siphon play? So the siphon is really important in her navigating her space. Let's see if I can get you guys a good view. Come on, you want to bring it to the other side for them to see? So she's got it over here right shine now. out about it. You can see a good view if you kind of reach past me. It's yeah. right where my finger is. If she doesn't move it. There it is. There we go. Right see there. the water coming out? Mm -hmm. So it's an important function. First of all, it's how she breathes. She sucks in the water in her mantle and then she pushes that out of her siphon which goes over her gills allowing her to breathe additionally though it's really important for navigation so in order to swim in the open ocean and she will actually swim in her enclosure here she'll fill up her big head with water and then she'll push water out that siphon and she'll use the siphon to direct where she's going and that helps her steer additionally it can shoot out at about 20 miles an hour so it really allows her to not only swim fast, but navigate really well. And then finally here in human care, they tend to use it when they're feeling expressive. Sometimes if she's really excited or she's sometimes if she's not very happy, like if I'm wrapping up a play session, <laughs> she will use that siphon to kind of express her she's emotions. Communicative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she speaks her mind. She absolutely she does. She lets us know. Very cool. Okay, so we are live right now. It is 2.30. Um, once we feed Grindy and once we do our enrichment, she's kind of will wrap up her time with us. So we're going to extend um, until towards the end of the stream to really full feed her and um, do our enrichment session. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be amazing. Oh, uh, speaking of, this is what she's going to eat and she's trying to make off with it now. Yeah, it's snack time. What do you feed her here at the aquarium, Brooke? So she gets a variety today. The typical things that she'll get are going to be things that she would encounter. So that's going to be things like shrimp, squid, uh, clam, mussel, crab claw, stuff like that. <laughs> However, because it is a special day, she does additionally get things like mackerel, herring, capelin, just to give her lots of variety. Oh. She's a big mackerel girl, so we'll give her a nice mackerel piece. You guys can see each suction cup can taste and smell. So when I hand it to her, she can taste it and smell it decide if she yes. wants it exactly what to do with and it and if she does it'll go uh, down the hatch which it looks like she's poised to do <laughs> she also sometimes will hang on to it right yeah. just kind of save it for later yeah so a lot of times especially with her she's not super food motivated so if she thinks that if she takes it and starts eating we might stop playing she'll hold on to it in her webbing that way she can uh, oh there it goes down the hatch there it goes she'll kind of hang Yummy. on to it in that webbing so that you know her eating time won't interrupt her play time incredible she's so cool 
Hey, we are nearing almost $300 raised for our nonprofit aquarium thanks to our almost 20 donors. Thank you so much for your support. We're also nearing 150,000 likes on this live stream. I'm wondering if we can get to 200,000 likes, if you guys can make that happen. That would be really exciting. Um, and if you can't donate, that is 100% fine. Just you being here in this live stream, sending us those likes, making those numbers go up, making sure you're following us and tuning into our lives, commenting on our videos are an incredible way to support us. And look at you go. We're already at 150,000 likes. You guys, you always blow us out of the water. You show us so much love here on TikTok. We love you guys right back. This is incredible. Let us know what you want to see on future live streams. We have our giant Pacific octopus today, which is definitely a crowd favorite. I mean, how can you not love seeing this incredible animal interact um, and learn more about her? Because there's so much to learn about octopuses. Um, but let us know what you want to see in a future live stream. This morning, we were live with our sea otters for a quick minute. It is sea otter awareness week. So we are excited to celebrate that every single year. It's very cool. Okay, great questions coming up. We are at the Long Beach Aquarium of the Pacific here in Southern California. Uh, you can come visit us. The aquarium is open. You can actually see Grindy in her habitat from that side of the exhibit. There's also many octopuses to see. We also have sea lions, um, sea otters. We have stingrays. We have sharks. We have penguins. We have lots of animals. Um, if you scroll through our feed here on TikTok, you can kind of get an idea of what a visit would entail. Great question. I love this question. How can you tell the difference between a female and a male octopus? So on a, you go to basically the third arm to the right, and on a female, so on her, the suction cups will go all the way to the end. Like they'll continue all the way mm -hmm. like that and get really small. On the male, they'll stop a few inches short. And what will be there is the hectocotylus, which is the male reproductive organ. Mm -hmm. So yeah. she's definitely a female. There's the hectocotylus <laughs> there. Very cool. Um, Okay, let's talk about their lifespans a little bit. So an octopus is hatched from an egg, correct? Yes. And it takes them quite a while to get this big, right? Yes, we estimate her to be around two years old, give or take. Mm -hmm. So they definitely take a minute. They, uh, when they reproduce, the female will, uh, the mama will lay eggs and she'll lay, you know, sometimes up to 100,000 100, eggs or so. And then she'll spend the rest of her life just defending those eggs. She won't eat, she won't hunt, she won't leave. She'll literally just guard the eggs yeah. until she eventually passes away from malnutrition and then all the babies are born. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, there's hundreds of thousands of eggs and yet only a few will really ever make it to this size. So Grindy really is one in like, you know, a couple thousand or something. Like yeah, that. they like quite a bit of eggs at a time. Very cool. Um, yeah, she is incredible. This is so much fun. Does it hurt, Brooke? Everyone wants to make sure you're okay. Are you good? Is she good? I am okay. She is good. Like we said earlier, she chooses to stick. This is a really fun game that she enjoys. Mm -hmm. And for me, it doesn't hurt at all. It just makes a lot of noise. So it, it seems uh, more painful than it actually is. Yeah. I think the thing people don't realize about an octopus is you really can't get an octopus to do anything it doesn't want to do. Is that right? Exactly. That's <laughs> kind of why I love this animal, this uh, working with this species, because they really tell you how they're feeling and if they're not up for something they're not coming over like grindy doesn't we love tiktok grindy doesn't care what tiktok is you know she i think she loves it too <laughs> she's always on the for you page what do you mean <laughs> she loves tiktok but you're right she doesn't know that we're necessarily live streaming i mean maybe she does know maybe she knows way more than Leo. they are very smart mm -hmm. um i'm sure if grindy had her own tiktok she'd be like 10 million followers at oh, least of course. Of course. <laughs> very cool Look at this star. i know she is a star this is incredible thank you everybody every, every whoa forgot how to speak for a second i got so excited you guys doing this live stream is so much fun i get distracted because there's an octopus in front of me and i hope when you're watching this live stream you're kind of pretending that this is your point of view too here's your hand reaching out to the octopus we're going to go in and touch her for a second you want to hand her a very cool yeah that would be amazing let's feed her tiktok this is a piece of squid yummy yummy let's put it right here in her suction cup there you go, lady. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Very cool. So each suction cup is tasting and smelling it. She's deciding, am I in the mood for squid today? Is this what I want? Mm -hmm. Not so sure. Spoiled girl. Yep, definitely. Speaking of their food, they all get restaurant quality food. So if you go to a nice seafood dinner, you're basically getting served what they get served. Yeah, so twins. Only, mm -hmm. only the best. <laughs> Amazing. We're live here at the Aquarium of the Pacific here in Long Beach, California, hanging out with Grindylow. 
or Grindy for short, the Giant Pacific Octopus. And I want to give a shout out to our 28 donors. Thank you so much for your support. We're nearing $500 raised. I saw a $100 donation come, come in. Thank you so much for your support. It's not letting me pull up your name right now. I apologize, but we're just so thankful to you. Um, we're a nonprofit aquarium. So anytime you donate here on TikTok, 100% of that donation goes right back to the animals that call us home, our conservation and education efforts. So we're so thankful for your support. This is a great question. When she inks, is that ink poisonous? No, so the ink isn't poisonous. It's not really harmful at all, per se. It's more meant to confuse and disorient like a, a predator. Yeah, absolutely. So that's more the function of it. It's more to buy her some time so she can get away in a life or death situation. Which is why it's important that she has an ink here at the aquarium. If that ever were to happen, we would need to assess and address immediately what would cause her such stress. But like we said before, she's never in here. Uh, she's a happy and healthy and growing girl. Yeah, absolutely. This is so funny. This is a great question it's coming in. Okay, there was a really good question. I am catching up on your comments now. What is the differences between a squid and an octopus? They're in the same family of cephalopods. Um, but what are the major differences besides maybe size? Size is definitely a big one. Mm -hmm. uh, additionally, squids have um, tentacles and octopus do not. Octopus have arms. So all of these are her eight arms. Um, and really size is a big one, with the exception of the giant squid, of course. Yeah. Uh, they tend to run smaller. Yeah, definitely. Tend to, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's always exceptions to rules in the ocean. How big is Grindy and how much bigger do you expect her to grow? So Grindy, the last time we weighed her was about a month ago and she was right about 15 pounds. We believe she's closer to 18 or 20 Ooh, right now. Growing so girl. She's going to get weighed, I believe tomorrow actually. Oh, so cool. we'll get a, a we'll have an update. Yeah, absolutely. But, is it, sorry, go ahead. Oh no, you're good. I was gonna ask, is it true that if an octopus loses an arm, they're able to grow it back? Yes, they are. And you've actually got the perfect shot here. So right here, when Grindy came to us, she had this little nub of an arm, and you can see she started to, to regenerate grow. that limb. I'll try to get it in a good light. Yeah, we can you. totally see it. Good but job, yeah. Grindy. Oh, she heard you. Maybe, yeah, she's maybe like, she is listening. check this out. Look at what I'm working on lately. Yeah, she does love TikTok. <laughs> she really does. I know she does. Very cool. This is amazing. Hey, thank you so much. Shout out to Sky. Thank you so much for your $50 donation. We're at $555 uh, raised. Thank you so much for the lucky number. We love it. And we're nearing 500,000 likes during this live stream. Thank you so much, everybody, for showing us love. It's very much appreciated. In a few minutes, we're going to do our enrichment choosing poll, so stay tuned for that. You're going to be able to choose between two um, enrichment devices, toys, technically, um, to decide what she's going to play with today. I'm really excited. So I called her a sea puppy. A little bit. A little Pretty bit like much. a sea puppy. Great question. Does she have bones? Does she have any bones in her body? So the only bone she has in her body is going to be her feet. It's at the center of all her arms, and she is kind of hiding it right now. You can't really see. In there. In there somewhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, that's going to be her only bone, and that's what actually makes her such a really good escape artist. You've heard of octos escaping their tanks, eating other animals, you know, doing crazy stuff. And that's because she can slide this massive body of hers into any spot that she can fit that beak. And that beak's only gonna be about this big. Yeah. So that means she could probably slide through a spot that's the size of maybe even as small as a quarter. Like. Yeah, look at her sneaking up on her food right mm -hmm. here. Look at this arm just inching closer and closer good, to good, her good. food. She's gonna get that in a few minutes, everybody. Don't worry. The interesting thing is, look, I slide handed her some food, but she's just holding it. She's just hanging on to it right there. She's hanging on to that piece of mackerel. That's why I'm saving mean, it for later. That's why I say a lot of times she's not super food motivated. And you can tell these animals really prefer play and interaction because she's got the food there and yet she hasn't even bothered to bring it to her mouth. She's had that there <laughs> for three or four minutes. Now. Yeah, quite some time. It's been really cool. Oh my gosh, everybody, this is so much fun. If you do me a favor, if you took any screenshots during this live stream, um, tweet them at us or post them on your um, other stories, tag us so we can see it. We'd love that you spread the word of our aquarium and our live streams across the internet. Thank you so much for your support. Let's catch up on some comments now. My name is Madeline. I am behind the camera. I am joined with Aquarius Brooke, who is answering all of our octop octopus questions about Grindy, the giant Pacific octopus. People really love the sound of the suction cups. Let's hear a little bit more of that. Some Octo ASMR for you. <laughs> People are really curious about her having nine brains and three hearts. Can you talk a little bit more about that? What is the purpose for to have so many of each thing? <laughs> um, 
Honestly, I think one of the, the greatest purposes, especially of all of her brains, is going to be, if you look at her body, she's just this big, soft, squishy thing. She doesn't have a hard shell, she doesn't have ferocious teeth, so there's no way for her to defend herself except for that big brain of hers. So that's going to include her ability to camouflage, her eyesight, all of that stuff is super important because, I mean, everything in the ocean needs octopus. Octopus eat octopus. Yeah. <laughs> sea lions, sharks, seals, you name it. And it's probably something that will uh, that she'll fall prey to. So it's super important for those purposes that she has a really big brain and that she outsmarts her predators. Absolutely. Very important. Very cool. Oh, someone wants to know where her eyes are. We can get a peek nice at that. Look. There it is. There's an eye. You can see that horizontal pupil. It's right so cool. There. That allows her to see 360 degrees. So she can see your hand back there, right? Brooke, yes. If you're there's, behind. there's no sneaking up on her. She nope. can see my hand. And she can also see anybody, anybody, anywhere, pretty much. There's no, you're not going to sneak up on an octopus. Uh, she might sneak up on you, though. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Oh, this is a great question. Brooke, do we know if she sees color? So, um, they're not so sure. There's, there's a lot of different studies and I've seen a lot of different research on what they do and don't see. Mm -hmm. So it's important to just, I would just say more to look online and see what's most recent and up to date. Yes. I might be out of touch with that. Yeah. And also just that there are some conflicting things on whether or not they see color. Yeah. So I won't speak to that. I don't know if we've installed octopus eyes into our mm -hmm. own eyes quite yet so we can fully understand it, but there's a lot of studies out there. So definitely do some research. Yeah. There's a um, that they do see some range of colors, just the certainty of it. I'm not sure of off the top of my head. Yeah. I don't want to mislead you too. Probably. That's okay, Brooke. You're doing a great job. <laughs> um, this is amazing. Yeah. So a lot of people wonder why an octopus is red. Um, you would think that for an animal that is so heavily preyed upon that red would be a mistake to be in the ocean but it's actually the safest color to be in the ocean is that right brooke yes so uh, anyone who's familiar with diving will be able to tell you that the first color that we lose sight of you're not able to see is red it's the first color that disappears as you you know go down like an atmosphere or two in the ocean yeah and so with that they basically become i don't want to say invisible it's not an invisibility cloak but if you can't see red and they blend in really well with everything it's down true. there mm -hmm. so yeah she kind of appears more gray or bluish exactly. brown right brown. In color She'll yeah. fit right in with the ocean and the rocks so. yeah the super cool thing that you would think off the top of your head how strange this animal is just bright red like look at me but yet it works in their favor very cool. Hey, I want to give a shout out to my moderator who has been asking me questions that I have not purposely been ignoring. But in a few minutes, we are going to do an enrichment poll. We're going to decide what toy she's going to play with. And one toy is a toy boat, and the other toy is a toy hamster ball. I'm trying to show them to you guys. Yeah. But right behind, I can go back here, Brooke. That's okay. okay. <laughs> we got a toy boat. So there. we have a boat. And then I can't reach that one, but maybe you can. And a hamster ball. So let us know. I'm going to say that I am, uh, well, yeah, I'll probably influence the decision. I haven't seen Grindy play with the, um, in the hamster ball yet, so I would like to see this if possible, but it will be up to you guys in probably about two minutes that uh, poll is going to go up, so stay at, tuned for that. Look at that. She's still hanging on to that. She's still hanging on to that piece of mackerel. <laughs> She's really loving hanging out with Brooke and TikTok today. This is incredible. All right, poll is up, everybody. Let us know what you want to see, the hamster ball enrichment or the toy boat enrichment. I won't say the toy boat isn't fun. We have done that one before, though, and you've seen it on our TikTok uh, channel and on our live streams before, but we haven't seen this one before. So to, uh, make your own choice. Not to sway the masses, make your this own is her choice. Favorite. And this is her favorite. Her so favorite, if you want to make Grindy a little happy, you have the power right now. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is so much fun. Let us know what you want to see on future live streams. The octopus stream is so incredible. You get to learn so much more about these animals. But we're live every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Pacific. Um, it used to be 3 p.m. if you're a fan of ours and you're used to tuning in. It used to be 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. But now it is 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, and hopefully you can still make that time slot. But if not, make sure you have notifications turned on because I like to go live periodically throughout the week. But at least you know every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Pacific you'll be able to catch us live here on TikTok. All right. <laughs> this is so much fun. This is 
the comments are just going so quick that it's hard to keep up everybody. So I appreciate you being here. If I miss your question, just keep asking it in the comments. Um, and thank you so much for being here. This is awesome. I want to thank our 38 donors who have raised almost $700 for our nonprofit wow, aquarium. If we get to $1,000 raised today, that would be incredible. That money, 100% of your donation goes right back to our nonprofit. The 12,000 animals that call us home and our conservation education efforts. We couldn't do it without you. So thank you so much for your support. In a few minutes, probably like a minute now, maybe even less than that, we're going to do an enrichment device between these two. You're either choosing the hamster ball or the boat, and it's gonna get filled with some of her favorite foods, and we're gonna watch her play, potentially open it. It might take her a while. We'll have to see how long it takes her. Um, but Brooke, how often does she eat? How often does an octopus eat? Do they eat every single day? So they don't have to eat every day. They are cold water animals. Their metabolism tends to move slower. However, because she is a growing girl, she is offered food nearly every day. And then I'll just remove whatever she chooses not to eat. So it's important for her to have the choice. Uh, but additionally to feeding, we actually want to make sure that she stays really enriched. Uh, in the wild, she would spend a lot of time hunting and scouring and scavenging for food. So we like to replicate that here. That's why we use enrichments, or we call them toys, but they're really behavioral enrichments, such as these, so that she has to solve puzzles. She has to work hard to get to her food. That way she's displaying that natural foraging behavior, just like her wild counterparts. We don't wanna give her anything easy. There wouldn't be anything easy out there for her nope. either. And it's good to keep her brain really stimulated. Absolutely. And with that, we have a winner for our poll. It is the hamster ball. We get her favorite toy today. This is incredible. Very cool. Oh, someone asked a great question. Why don't, do we ever give her live food to hunt inside of her habitat? Yeah, so we do. So she actually does. We have a, we are basically doing a live crab program where we pick up crabs from the Long Beach uh, seafood market live. Mm -hmm and then we will allow her to hunt those just like she would in the wild very in cool enclosure. that's awesome incredible cool so she's she gets a she gets a ton of different enrichments and uh, lots of lots of stimulation for this animal it's so important for her exactly this is great okay i think I we're think ready no nope. <laughs> she's like i'll be taking these look at her she's trying to steal brooks keys escape artist man yep she's a pro <laughs> but actually she's not a pro because we've done a really good job of making sure that she's very secure in here um, she hasn't escaped uh, the walls are lined in astroturf and then there's also a double lock on the door so this is astroturf lining her exhibit which she can't suction into which is incredible so we'll let her think that she's you know getting away with stealing some keys today but yeah. she's very safe here at the aquarium of the pacific <laughs> this is awesome all right i think we're ready for her enrichment I think we're ready. What do you think, everybody? Let's drop some hamster emojis in the comments if you're excited for her hamster bowl, hamster ball enrichment. I'm excited too. I'm sorry, guys. It takes me a minute because my hands are numb. From the oh, water. we have an octopus to look at. We're very, we're we're entertained. Do not worry, bro. And what are you filling in there? So she's getting whole muscle, so she'll have to actually use her beak to break that apart. The same goes for the clam, and the same for the crab claw. So that's another good one that she'll enjoy. Additionally with that, she's going to get some squid. Like I said, octopus eat octopus, so this yep. is a normal food item for her. Mm -hmm. As well as shrimp. That would be a common thing that she would uh, hunt on a reef. And then the kind of treats she gets, because this is a special occasion, are going to be her mackerel, Ooh. her herring, and her cape lentil. Delicious these all, sushi. These are all kind of different treats that we don't give her too often because they're not a typical thing, but we also like to keep uh, variety up in her diet and it's enriching for her to try new flavors so as soon as Very I can cool. get this set. Does she ever climb into the ball Brooke? Uh, no so she doesn't climb into the ball I think she's a little bit too big to really desire to yeah, do that. Yeah maybe if she was she a little smaller. Maybe we got to upgrade her maybe we got to get a bigger, one. Get a bigger one. Yeah I think that's a good idea put a hamster ball in a hamster ball. Yeah with those donations we'll be able to get a couple. Thank you so much to the 41 donors we're nearing $700 raised it would be all incredible right. if we hit that. Thank you all so much for your support. Um, so all of those get locked in there. Locked We're not making there. it easy for She's her. She's got to figure out how to open it. Yeah. She loves this one. <laughs> I will say before I hand it to her, she has multiple pieces of food that she hasn't bothered to eat. So yep. it is possible that she might, you know, take it and just save side. it. Yeah, we might not see it get opened up today here on TikTok. Um, but let me get some video behind the scenes and we'll see if we can get a video together showing her opening it. Um, what's her water temperature in here, Brooke? The water temperature is the coldest in the building, colder than otters and penguins. It's 47 degrees. 
amazing. Someone's wondering about alternative ways to donate. You can head to the link in our bio if you're interested. Um, but even just showing up here on TikTok Live and supporting us, um, sharing this live stream with your family and friends is an incredible way to support our nonprofit aquarium. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Someone was concerned that your hands are numb and they're <laughs> definitely on its way, if not already. It's part of the job, right, Brooke? Absolutely. <laughs> Some jobs have problems. Yours are that your hands get numb from playing with an octopus for too long. Nope. Not necessarily a bad problem to have. Lots, lots of octopus kisses. <laughs> exactly. Someone wants to know if she ever throws the ball. No, so she won't throw the ball. They have seen uh, octos play with them, so put them in the water, use their siphon to push them around. So it's possible she does that when we're not around, but um, throwing things out of the water is not really in like her repertoire of normal behavior. And as you can see, she's like got the ball she's like that's nice i like food but yeah. she's choosing playtime over that yeah she, really she likes hanging out with brooke obviously her tug of war. who doesn't brooke is the best this is amazing <laughs> um i have a question for you brooke have you ever noticed um grindy choosing two arms to walk on as kind of like legs over the other is that pretty common for octopuses they do navigate like that i haven't noticed her necessarily have a preference but um, she does oftentimes, so like these two are front arms here. And a lot of times when I come in for my weekend and she was really excited to see me, she'll <laughs> launch herself from the window and those two arms will actually like burst through the top of the water and wow. she'll lead with them, like almost like pouncing like a big cat. Yeah. Would. When she first arrived at our aquarium, I remember meeting her for the first time. She kept throwing two arms up in the air like, woo! Yes. She was a woo girl when she arrived. A woo girl. She I can was. relate. I can totally relate. <laughs> um, do you think she can tell the difference between you and another person? Like if oh. I touch her now, does she know this is a separate person? Absolutely. So not only based on eyesight, because she can see really well, but also based on taste and smell, because each suction cup can individually taste and smell. So you taste different, you smell different, you also, hi hun, <laughs> you also feel different uh, and you likely interact with her different than I do yeah. as well, which is why encounters like this are really enriching for her and why she enjoys them so much. That's Look amazing. At her go. Look at her. Yep. Okay, Arm out. She's hanging out. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is something we wouldn't do normally. So these doors are always closed. She's always safe and sound inside of the habitat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. What do you have to say, lady? What do you want to know? Expressive. Yeah. I think it's one of those where when you give them the toy and the enrichment at the end, that's normally how you kind of end a yep. session. So she thinks we're leaving. So she's starting to well, express how she I don't know if we can go that. anywhere, Brooke. I know we said we were going to wrap up at three. That's in five minutes. Yeah. We might not be able to wrap up anytime soon. We'll have to I see. I think I'm stuck here for a while. I think you might be a little bit <laughs> stuck here. This is your boss. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is she's my boss. Everybody's boss today. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everyone wanted to know what happened there. What was that? Did she fart? What was what happened? Uh, no, so that is her siphon. She actually uses it to breathe and also to steer in the ocean and also to express how she's feeling. So sometimes she'll do it when she's excited. Sometimes she'll do it when she's, you know, mad if she thinks we're wrapping up or something. So uh, she's got pinpoint accuracy and she does soak us keepers occasionally. So we're always on our toes. I'm always feeling <laughs> like she's about to. So. Yep, 100%. This is so cool. And like I said, she's got pinpoint accuracy, so I've been hit in the face by her siphon. Yeah, again. she knows what she's doing. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, does she need all three of her hearts in order to live? Are they all um, critical? I believe they are. Yeah. I'll say I believe because I haven't Googled that question exactly <laughs> myself. There's a lot of information on Octo, so I don't have every single answer, but I, I do believe that they're all uh, in part of important, important functions in her body. Amazing. We have someone who is 11 years old in the comments who wants to know how to get your job, Brooke. What would you recommend to someone who wants to pursue a, a career in marine taking care of marine animals. Uh, so I always tell people to uh, go, go to the facility that you're interested in and just get any position and work hard and have a good attitude. A lot of people in this industry started in education. They started- To show her in, you know, hanging out on you there. I sit on my lap. Yep, <laughs> just trying to. They started in education or food and beverage, wherever. And just to work hard and have a good attitude. I don't think people say it enough and it goes a long way. Additionally, a way you can set yourself apart that people do say a lot is to volunteer. And here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, we have an amazing volunteer program. And I'm not just saying that because I work here. We do actually have an incredible program where we really integrate the volunteer staff with the husbandry staff. So you do the things that we do. 
So uh, definitely check that out if that's something you're interested in. And I believe we have a volunteer program too. We do. So mm -hmm. If she's 11, that's a great place to start looking. Yeah, we have opportunities for all ages here at our aquarium. So check out our, check out our website. Um, it's linked in our bio here on TikTok and our other social platforms. Um, this is a great question. How's her hearing? Is she able to hear us talking up here? Could she hear things underwater? So she doesn't hear conventionally like we do, but she does feel vibration. So she does know we're talking. She does know we're having conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, it looks like she just piqued a little bit of interest in her. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go anywhere. <laughs> no, really, no. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. You know, she's kind of pulling back a little bit now. It kind of looks like maybe she's interested in that hamster ball we gave her, but it kind of seems like she doesn't want you to go anywhere still, Brooke. She still has, hand. yep, still, still has got to hold your hand for a little bit longer. <laughs> she is big on, she likes to hold hands while she eats. Aww. So sometimes Same. also will take things away and go eat by themselves. She likes to sit here and hold hands, so. That is really precious. This is Grindy Lowe, the giant Pacific octopus here at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California. You can come see her in person. She's in our Northern Pacific Gallery. And I believe we have an octopus in every single gallery right now. So if you come to the aquarium, it's a great time to visit this fall. Um, great questions coming in. Oh my gosh, there's so many. Okay, I will talk about some of my favorite things about the octopus um, in general. And I love whenever she... <laughs> has some water stuck in her uh her arms here and she just has little balloons everywhere i love that that's one of my favorite things um this octopus in particular is very interesting she's very unique in her color and just her overall body and her markings can you just point a little, um some of those out brooke yeah so right now she's got that real smooth red color so it's hard to see them but if you come to the aquarium she has a couple markings that are super unique so like one she'll have a marking right here yeah we can kind of see it white. you can yeah. kind of see it mm -hmm. she's also got like slits that are white by her yeah. eyes and then more spots on the head she and when she came to us too she was like a dark purple or black color so super unique coloration we actually yeah. thought she might be the rare subspecies of gpo but she's missing some of those cute like like uh common important markings so she's uh super she's very unique yeah very unique she's incredible and she's beautiful you can see her kind of changing color just kind of as we're interacting with her here this is so amazing how is she able to change color so quickly in the texture of her skin so uh her entire body is covered in cells called chromatophores and those cells can change color so uh, what happens is those cells are communi communicated to by her brain and her brain will tell her what color to change what texture to change when to change we're just super fun to watch so she can be anywhere from this kind of soft red to like a, a pale white to a brown. And then her texture can be anywhere from smooth like it is now, just her looking like a little piece of algae or having a lot of texture. And sometimes if I pet her, she'll change texture. And yeah. Stimulation. So you can definitely saw a reaction to, there. Yeah. She's getting a little lighter and brighter now. She does like her head rubs a lot. Not every octo does. So you definitely have to kind of try and see what they like, but she's a, She's a big head rub girl. So. Very cool. Um, I love this question. Does an octopus ever get itchy? I don't think so, but she does enjoy when you rub her head. So maybe, <laughs> maybe I'm reaching a spot. There. I've also seen previous octopuses just insert an arm into their siphon, yes, into happens. their mantle. Um, don't know what they do in there, but maybe they're just doing a little brain scratch. A little scratch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's amazing. They're incredible animals. Um, and what is in here? What is what is happening in here? Is this her entire body in that little little part? So yeah, she's basically a head and arms, mm -hmm. and that's gonna be. And I can't really show you because my hands are yeah, taken she's, up. Yeah, you're busy. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's busy with me. Mm -hmm. But uh, this entire head cavity holds everything from her three hearts to her one of her nine brains, her heart, her liver, all of her gills, all of her important functions are held in that arm. Very cool. Uh -huh. Someone asked if she blinks. Eyelid. That's a great question. Does she have an eyelid? She does not have an eyelid. So she never uh, never closes she's her eyes. She's always seen. She's, she's, she's always watching. Yeah, she's always watching. I love it. That is so amazing. Brooke, do you have somewhere to be anytime soon? You want to, do you mind if we go live for no, maybe, no. say, 10, 15 more minutes to see? Nowhere to be All but right. with her. Okay, so. well, not a bad place to be. This is amazing. We're going to be live for a few more minutes, so make sure that you share this live stream with your family and friends. That way they can get in on the fun before we wrap up today.
make sure you're following us live or make sure you're following us here on TikTok so you can catch us when we go live. Um, but you'll always find us live every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Pacific. Where is the ink stored that she has whenever she needs to use it? So her ink sack is gonna be in her mantle and mm -hmm. that's because she's gonna push that ink out using her mantle and her siphon and that's how she's gonna direct it as well as escape. Cause like we've said, in order to swim through the ocean, you'll sometimes see them do that swim motion and she'll do that here as well. She's gonna fill her head with water and then push all of that water at a really high rate of speed, up to 20 miles an hour, out through her siphon. And then she'll use the siphon to steer to help her actually maneuver through the water. It's really impressive. And she does it a lot here at the aquarium. So if you ever happen to be by, you might get to catch her. Yeah. Does her neurotoxin, does the TPO neurotoxin affect people, humans? Uh, if I sat here and let her chew on my hand, yes. Yeah, it would not it, feel good. It does, it, it's a paralytic, so mm -hmm. you, I'm not necessarily sure how much of it I would be able to feel, because it has like a numbing sensation, yeah. mm -hmm. but it would break down tissue just like mine, so yeah. Yeah, she could potentially slurp me if I <laughs> let her. Yeah, so if we see an octopus in the wild, we definitely do not want to interact, do not want to touch. There's some octopuses that are poisonous to humans. Yeah. Are venomous? Venomous. Venomous, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Poisonous <laughs> if you eat it. Venomous if it bites you, is that right? Yes. I'm learning, correct. Brooke. I'm learning. <laughs> I'm getting okay, there. I have to do that trick too. I'm like, wait, poison? Yeah, venomous? which one? Which one? Very cool. But yeah, so you definitely don't want to approach any wild animal, but especially not an octopus. Like I said earlier, they're a prey item to a lot of animals, so you could potentially, you know, at best spook it, at worst, you can get yourself or it hurt. So Absolutely. You want to always keep a respectful distance from wild animals and come see them up close at the aquarium. Yeah, 100%. I love if you drop some hearts in the chat if you've been here since the beginning because you have seen Brooke go from fully wrestling with her to just kind of just relaxing it's just way more chill now she had her she had her like a her enrichment session she's very fun and this actually right here is a hamster ball that she took that's where it is right now she's hanging on to it um it's full of her favorite treats and she's just chilling with it. She hasn't started work on it, I think. I think she's gonna hang on to it until later today. Yep. This is awesome. Like we said earlier, uh, she's not super food motivated. She's much more motivated by plays, playing and interacting. So, you know, we gave her the hamster balls, her favorite toy, full of all of her favorite, favorite food, but she still chooses interaction. Yeah, over and that's that. what this is. This is a plastic ball that she's hanging on to right now, filled with her favorite foods. And when we leave, she'll probably start working on it. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, very cool questions coming in. Um, how do you tell the difference between a female and a male octopus, Brooke? So on a male octopus, they will, I can actually show you on a female octopus since she's a female, yeah. mm -hmm. if I can get this hand back, honey. Maybe not. Thank you. Look at her go so dark right there. She's I like, know, I thought she was gonna spray Yeah, she me. might, <laughs> she just might. So the third arm from the right, the females will have suction cups all the way to the tip, just like you can see there, really yeah. small little suction cups. On the males, it'll stop just short, and what will be there is their, what's called a hectocotylus. It's their male reproductive organ. So that's how we tell the males and the females apart. Absolutely. And we have, um, in the past, have had male octopuses at our aquarium. Uh, if you scroll through our octopus playlist here on TikTok, you can learn even more about animals and octopuses and other animals that we have in playlists too. Um, okay. Oh, this is a great question, Brooke. Do you know if octopuses sleep? Do they dream? Do they have different types of sleep? Or is it kind of just they're always in stages of awake and rest? Yeah, so they, uh, they will alternate between stages of active and more restful sleep. Mm -hmm. So they're never fully, you know, shut off. Like, um, fully asleep. It's not safe really for them. Yeah, it's not super yeah. safe. Mm -hmm. So um, for her, she will turn this light pale white. So if you ever come in and she's at the very bottom or in one of her corners and she's a super light pale white, that usually means she's sleeping. I've noticed with her, she tends to alternate between two or three active days followed by a really sleepy day and then two or three more active days followed by a sleepy day. But the octo before was an active day, sleepy day, active day, sleepy day. Pretty so much every other. Each, yeah. So each one is very different, which is also part of what makes them fun to work with because you got to learn your animal and uh, figure out what, what they like and don't like. And that Absolutely. includes keepers as well. You guys, we have raised almost $800 during this live stream and we are nearing 750,000 likes. Thank you so much. You guys are incredible. Someone says that her love language is physical touch. It might be. It might be acts of service too a little bit. Receiving gifts, maybe. I don't, know. I don't think she appreciates the acts of service. I don't think she understands <laughs> them, but physical touch is all She's about. all about it. Quality time, for sure. 
Um, is this salt or fresh water? So this is salt water. GPOs are giant Pacific octopus. Uh, that was just some field jargon. They'll range anywhere from off the coast here up to Alaska or to Japan. So they're going to be a cold water, salt water species. Very cool. And does she get along with any other animals? Or are they pretty solitary? So they are solitary animals. Sometimes people wonder why we don't give them a friend, and it's because they'd actually likely uh, cannibalize on one another as they yeah. do in the wild. Mm -hmm. So the only tank mates she gets are going to be the starfish, which you can see they're all smelling the food. Oh the hi! Water. You're you're new. You weren't here when we first started. Yep. You snuck up on us, starfish here, everybody. They can smell the food, and while Grindy would prefer to play, they'd prefer to eat. So yeah, mm -hmm. they're 100%. Cool mm -hmm. But um, additionally, when she has an enemy, she has live kelp. She has a couple snails and cucumbers in here. Just things that are uh, natural for her environment, but that she won't eat or harm. We want to make sure we keep all of our animals safe here at the aquarium. Absolutely. All right, everybody, with that, I'm going to wrap up for the day. Thank you all so much for hanging out with us here on TikTok Live. We had so much fun hanging out with you all, getting to know more about Grindy, watching that fun <laughs> enrichment. And I just love that it's just right here. This is her hamster ball right here that she's hanging on to. Yep. That was a really fun live, everybody. Thank you for the likes. We almost hit 750,000 likes. I think we'll probably hit it, actually, by the time I'm done talking. You guys are incredible. Thank you so much for showing up for us. We're live every Tuesday at 2 p.m. It used to be 3 p.m. Now it's 2 p.m. Pacific, Tuesdays at 2 here at the aquarium. Um, I got to come up with some sort of funny, punny thing. Tuesdays at 2, down in the blue. Oh, that's good. That was good <laughs> Thank you. I try. I try. Uh, my name is Madeline. I've been behind the camera. I'm hanging out with Brooke, Aquarius Brooke. And of course, Grindy, our star here today. That was amazing. Yeah, I'm gonna see if Brooke needs any help getting getting out of the arms uh, and wrap up our stream today. Thank you everybody for joining us. We'll see you next week here on TikTok Live. And maybe, maybe sooner than that, we'll see. All right, everybody. Thank you, thank you for joining us. Bye, Brooke. Bye, Grindy. Bye, you guys. Bye.